There are a lot of hidden places like caves where I can hide from the wind. Because the evening is going to be windy. Look at this place. I can't believe my eyes. The dream has come true. So friends, what challenge has I set myself? The task is very simple. From Monday to Friday I will have to survive in the wilderness, build myself a shelter that will protect me from the rain, catch something that I can eat, get fire first of all because it is very important, try to find fresh water and survive a week in the wilderness. I will try to change my location of course because it will be more interesting. Hopefully the batteries and power bank should suffice for a week of filming video and I plan to return on Saturday to Civilization, a hotel somewhere, charge all my equipment, get myself together and edit the videos quickly. So friends please do not judge my editing. I'll have very little time so it would be hard to make any special effects and work on beautiful transitions, but I'll do my best to show you the atmosphere. After taking a short walk along the shore, I collected some bamboo parts, which I want to use to get a fire. First of all, I need to use the chaff from this bamboo. So, hello, is there anybody in there? So this one, I'll put aside for now.
Oh yes, that's it. Look, when you move the blade up, you get a chip like this. That's exactly what I need. Great, great. Boy, what? I'll also take some more of the bamboo. If you make such movements with the knife from top to bottom, you get one solid chip. So good, so wispy. Not sawdust, but whole quality chip. Well, here's a little tinder I've collected. Uh. Yeah, and this part of the bamboo is a little damp. To be honest, this one is better. Now I'm making a hole here, right here. I will mark its center and on this side, look here. I've made a long groove where I will put the tinder. And on this side, I need to make this cross notch. That's my saw. Look, here's the notch, so this is where I need to make the notch. There you go. With a through hole, a very small one. I don't know, friends, this is my first time doing this. I hope it turns out well. Look, now I press my tinder tightly here and press the second strip so it doesn't fly away. It's very important. I will take this in two hands and by creating friction, I'll try to get a burning coal. This is the one here I'll blow up in my tinder. Now I'm going to use this big piece of bamboo as the base. All right, I have to go out in the sun. Doc. Yeah, I think this is the part that will be good for friction. I'll just work on it a little bit. The main thing is not to lose my tinder. This is the part I'll clean up a bit. I need to make a corner that will fall into the groove because the bamboo stem wall here is thick enough it may not fit. I put one part against the wall and the other part against my abs. I take it in both hands and put it in this groove and then start. Gradually warming the walls of the bamboo stem both at the base and at the groove. So, let's see, did I make it? Got it and start moving. The stem wall of bamboo darkens at the base. I can smell that it is burning. It means that slowly the bamboo is heating up. I'm speeding up a little bit. The main thing is not to give up too soon. I am waiting for the smoke. I see the smoke. Okay, there is smoke. I need to work harder. What the hell is going on? Either my bamboo is too damp or it's I gave up too early. Damn, but no one said it would be easy. I put it in the groove and start again. So I can smell the smoke. But it's a little early. It is so difficult. Almost. Why don't you want to light up? The main thing is patience. I'm all charged up. Put it in the groove and gradually start.
There is no time to lose. First of all, I need to explore the area well. It is clear that there are water sources. It is clear that there are also all sorts of crabs around here, but also there are mangrove bushes and jungles. So I need to go up to explore the area. Perhaps there are fruits and vegetables or some nutritious insects. So I am going up. Now that's a find. Look at this jackpot. Even though they are still very young, but two pineapples is a bonus. It's a big bonus. This is the first time I've ever seen a wild pineapple growing just like that in the wild. It's not quite ripe yet, but I'm really hungry, so I'll take one banana and won't touch the rest. Green bananas are like our cucumbers, and it's too early to eat them, that's for sure. I'd rather bake them over a fire, because eating them raw is not an option. Here's another whole bunch of young bananas. I'll get to them later. Not the best conditions for fishing and for underwater hunting. It would be my Wilson. Do you remember? It was the dude Tom Hanks hung out with and socialized with so he wouldn't go crazy. Or it was actually the first signs that he went crazy. I don't know, but I'll have my own Wilson. Come on, man. <clears throat> I still have a lot of sand in my throat. The sun has already set, but the waves are still big. I'm also glad that I saw the fruit of the coconut, and this means that at the top of the hill there, I can try to look for mango fruits, which are often found here. I saw a shell from a large Akatina snail. They are also called giant African land snails. I think many of you how it looks, which means I'll probably cook them if I find them. I'm very glad that the climate is very warm here. It makes everything a little easier. I hope that at night there will be no strong wind. The sand is warm and it's dry. I'm quite close to that rock over there, but far enough so there is no risk of any pieces of rocks falling. And there are the roots of the trees kind of creating extra support, so I think is more or less safe here. And it's not so cold, quiet and calm. 
The sun has already set, I am not sure, but I hope that you can see everything well. Tomorrow in the morning I will have to catch something to eat and make a fire, at least the coals, because at any time I might need a fire to cook a meal, so it is important, very important. I'm like a little kid right now because I was lying there just looking at the sky, at the stars and a spark was flying over my head. I didn't realize at first what it was, but it was a firefly, just a little bug with a glowing ass. He scared me so much and now I'm like a little kid running after him and just looking at him. It's so cool to sleep under the stars, especially in a tropical country where every little firefly is new and exciting to you. Hope it is going to be the scariest thing that I've met on my way, much better than some scorpions or scolopendras or snakes. But it was fun of course that he scared me so much. It is very unfortunate that the camera doesn't help to convey that feeling. At night there are all sorts of different crabs, crayfish, hermit crabs wandering everywhere right next to me, climb like little cockroaches. I can gather a dozen of these guys and make a broth as the last resort. It can be an option, even though they are so pretty. I'd rather catch some fish tomorrow because I'm sorry to cook such beautiful tiny crabs. Friends, just now I heard some noise. I think, well, maybe it is just a rock that fell. But it was a crab. Look how big it is. Can you see? How can I catch him? Where are you going? Now I found one sitting in a big hole. I do not know how to get him. Obviously not by hand. I saw once as Australians catch them with an iron skewer. They try to pick him up and get him out of the hole. Man, I don't even know how I can lure him out. It's really big. I don't know if you can see it or not. I have to get it at any cost. Here's another burrow. Look, there he is. What a find. There is a crab and there is another one over there. It comes out. I pick with a stick to scare him. And he comes out even more. Well, friends, it is more difficult than I thought. I am obviously mad excited, such big crabs, but I will need to think how to catch them. Maybe I can make some traps at night, put a snail inside and see if that works. Anyway, I'll think about it. But it's a trophy, a worthy trophy. The little ones are like these why are you so sassy guys and the big ones are not so brave. So, they are in the rocks near the mangrove bushes, and there are many large crabs there. Let's go deeper like this. Huh. And there's a baby over there, but it's just a little one. Shit, there's clay here. I'm falling. There's a little one, but where are the big ones? Opa. There is the first one, but it's just a baby. I won't eat it. And I won't even take it. It's just a baby crab. Look at that. And those were bigger, I don't know, half a kilogram. They were really big. Opa. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, I'll make something up and figure it out. I saw one more. It is a bigger one. Here, he is in the hole. Look. but he is not big enough either. Man, this is cool. Now I know I'll be hunting here. I 
I wish I hadn't got a tarantula instead of a crab. What are you doing running over my head, you crook? Man, it's too bad that I can't feel the claws. That's the most unpleasant and the most dangerous thing. It's a big crab, but it's a female again. It looks like the guys here run away better. Oh, this one is bigger, but it's a female again. What would I do now? How would I stay up at night and catch these mangrove crabs? Man, it's very tempting because I can make a pretty good broth because there might be not much meat here. But it would give a great taste and a good brew. The female I released because she has eggs. Sorry I disturbed you. So that's how you just go and look for it. Here's a little mangrove crab. Man, he's so beautiful, but it's a baby. And there are bigger ones the size of about half a pound. Very big ones, just very big. That bastard, strong one. Mm. Trying to escape back into his hole. He is trying to free his nippers. That's dangerous. As far as I know, mangrove crabs use their nippers to open coconuts, so I wouldn't want my finger instead of the coconut. Great, got it! Here's a red mangrove crab. Strong one. Hey, do not bite. It is my first prey on the island here. It is, is a mangrove crab. Gorgeous. But I think it is a female. If it is a female, I will not kill. Apparently there are eggs here. I feel very sorry for killing this one. But here too, my life is at stake. So either I will starve or survive. You always have to make a choice and it's really not the most pleasant feeling. Anyway, it's a female so even though I am very hungry, I'm going to let her out. Let her go back home. I'll show you closer.
So, friends, what can I say? It really sucks to film when it's dark, but the nights are very interesting here, and I do not know when I am going to sleep. Also, I don't have any food. I caught something to eat, but decided not to take it because I do not have a fire, and I'm afraid that what I catch something to eat, it will go bad till the morning. But at least I know that it's not going to be cold to sleep, because it is very hot, and in the morning, we'll take care of getting a fire going. And next time, I will definitely cook whatever I catch, because after all, I need to eat. Good night, friends. Friends, I walked through the jungle and along the shore, gathered a lot of bamboo, which I tried to use to make a fire. So far, it does not work. But man, I have to make it happen, so by all means, I will try until I get fire. And one more thing I found in the jungle. I haven't found fruit yet because they grow in a quite remote part of the jungle. But I found a piece of aloe. As far as I understand, it is aloe or some kind of similar plant. How can I use it? It is very good for your skin when you are in the tropics, and the heat is just merciless. The skin gets burned, dried out, and just destroyed by the sun's ultraviolet rays. Now I do this. I cut off the dry part, and the juice oozes out of the leaf. And I carefully apply it on my face and other parts of my body that are usually in direct sunlight. Just keep in mind not to put it on your lips because it is very bitter. Aloe juice moisturizes the skin very well. I think girls who use all sorts of creams know that many skin products are made of aloe vera. Okay, this thing I'll keep for later. This is a special edition of the beauty blog by me. Friends, here is an empty coconut that is already dried up. Well, obviously empty inside. Very old, it must have been swimming in the ocean for a very long time. The walls are very thin, and that means it is very light. I want to make a bowl so that when it rains, I can use it to collect fresh water. I'll just put it under a bush or a banana leaf and have water run down it into this bowl. <laughs> Look, here is the second part. I cut this coconut for a reason. There is a shell that seems to be the fruit of the coconut. The meat of the coconut was here, and I need to remove it all. I want to make two holes so that it would be possible to make a loop with some rope and hang it on a branch so that bugs and spiders from the floor don't get into this coconut and it will be easier to carry it if I need to. I need to find some kind of vines from which I can make a handle for my coconut bowl. Here is a leaf of a prickly plant. 
dry and its leaves are very stiff. So I will now cut three strips, braided them, and it will serve as a rope for my coconut cup. Look, this stuff is prickly. So I cut it all off. That's it. Now I am weaving it together. I think it turned out great. But I'm thinking of changing the location a little bit to show more interesting places of this island. Let's go. Friends, I found cacti that I'm already familiar with, and there are fruits here too. Quite small, but already something. I hope that just like in Turkey, I can use them as a little snack. Look friends, these are cactus fruits very similar to those in Turkey, only red. Look at the juice. It is not very sweet, but anyway, I'm going to use a knife to peel the prickles off and taste it anyway. And also here is a dry cactus. It has a porous texture, very interesting. I've never seen one like that. I think it might come in very handy for making fire.
Yes, peeling with a knife was not the best idea because the tiny needles stick to the fruit. So this idea is not very good. Burning them off on the fire is not quite possible because I don't have a fire yet. So I will just cut into two halves and eat the insides. The little spine got under my skin, of course. But I have a magnifying glass in my knife that I haven't used to make a fire yet. But I can use it as a spoon. Look. It's tasty enough. It's small but nice. I'm still happy. Because at least I managed to get something, thanks to my little experience in Turkey. And I can also use the peel. Look. I put it here. Now I clamp the cactus peel like this and with my magnifying glass take out the inside. Oh, it's delicious. And this part I don't need anymore. I clamp it like this and cut it in two parts. Look how juicy it is. Look, this is something. Mm. Well, how glad I am that there are a lot of these fruits here on the island. Look. I'm going to wash my knife so that later these prickles don't get on other food. But it's nice here. You can hide in the shade. There is quite a big cave here. But it's definitely dangerous to spend the night here because the waves and the tide will flood this cave anyway. Maybe I can find some shells or a crab. When the tide is low, small creatures, all kinds of fish are trapped. And under these rocks, there are all kinds of interesting creatures. Look what I found, friends. I think anglers will understand me. This is EG bait used for catching squid, but it's big enough. And it looks like it has been swimming in the ocean very long, but it's a cool souvenir. I found something. What is it? Today I want to dive to see what we have here. And the place is very interesting because it's shallow and there's a lot of seaweed. It started to rain a little. It's fresh enough, but because of the local climate, it's not cold at all. Cool, look. A dome of mango bushes overhead. And there's all kinds of caves like that. Unbelievable. Look where I can hide out for a while, and wait! Whew. 
Nature has made so many beautiful things for us. Look. There is so much trash from the ocean, it is crazy. From here you can see, I think the height here is about two and a half or three meters. And you can see that this wave brought a bunch of trash. But by the way, there is the fishing line and cord here. So it seems that now I have the rope and fishing line and net so I can now cut it and make some use out of it. It is sad that there is a lot of garbage, but that's good for me because I can do a lot of things with it. I have this piece of rope, which has different materials. I can use it as treads. If I use it like that, it will be enough. A perfect place to hide from the sun and just relax in silence. Today I want to share with you what are the pros of tropical rain if you are surviving on the island. I will show my options for collecting fresh water in a coconut bowl, using banana palm leaves and other things I find in the jungle. Also during the rain, a lot of snails come out and I will show you which species I will be collecting in order to cook it later. The cup is almost full, I'll pick some pineapples and bananas along the way. I'll get enough protein and vitamins and head back to the caves by the ocean. I will show you one possible way to make a fire during a tropical rain, especially where to get some dry chaff. I will make a fire and I will cook my snails. I find different kinds of local inhabitants along the way. 
and I will also share with you unforgettable views of local nature. During my underwater hunting, I will show you the underwater world and its strange creatures, and also my encounter with the lobster. <laughs> and so as it happens, now I have a tropical rain pouring down on me. It's just pouring like hell, but it's a good chance to get some fresh water, replenish my fresh water reserves. I'm going to find some banana branch, banana leaf, and put my coconut cup under it, because I need to get some fresh water. <laughs> Now I need to find some banana leaves that will drain the water down and I need to put my coconut bowl under the leaf so that fresh water drains into it while it rains. But I'm glad that soon the bananas will be ready. The soil here is like clay and it is not stable at all and the banana palm tree is pretty soft. It's like a thick reed so if you hit it it will break. And climbing on a banana tree is well basically impossible. It will just fall over. Here is a clear example. Just wind or humidity, I do not know. The roots are out and the tree just fell down. Mosquitoes are very active, even though it's raining. The green banana fruit is, first of all, not tasty and also pretty sticky. <sighs> I better go look for water. When it rains, the jungle comes alive in a very different way and it is very easy to notice. All the snails and similar creatures wake up. Here's a perfectly curled leaf. Look, it already works like a watering can. I'm going to cut it off like this and just put it in my coconut and put it out in the open. This is how the water will drain into my coconut bowl. Well, while the water is collecting, I have a good chance to pick up some snails that have crawled out in the rain. This is a good example of grape snail. They are edible snails. Well, it is clear that I will boil them, cook beforehand, but it is something to start with. I pick up a couple of acotina, quite large. It will be a good source of protein for me. Look, she is here under the leaves, just above my head. Here is a small acatina. Here are some pretty big ones. One, two, and there's a third one hanging. I found enough protein. Now I just have to wait until the rain stops and make a fire to cook it.
Look how I got bitten by mosquitoes. That's the reason why I'm not in the jungle all the time. I have to run away very fast from here. And later, I'll be back to see how my water situation is. Hello. Oh. Look, this bowl I will use to collect my snails. And there's an Akatina sitting on the pineapple bush too. Found another pineapple, look beautiful, red, small, but I can tell that soon it will be ripe. I came to my fresh water collecting kit, it fell down, and not only did it fall. Look, I don't think it was the wind, I'm more than sure someone chewed it up. Well I don't know, or, and of course it may have been the wind that ripped the leaf against a branch, but then, where is the rest of the leaf, it's gone. Let's see how much water I was able to collect in an hour or so. Look, it's okay. There's even something in there. Anyhow, some of the water came out when my bowl turned over. But nevertheless, there's already half a cup of water, I think. with a nutty coconut flavor, but clean fresh water. So nice. So the rain is not always a bad thing. The only problem is that it is very difficult to be in the jungle. I was bitten by mosquitoes, even though it's raining. So I will go back to the caves, wait until it stops raining, make a fire and roast my food. I'll put the bowl here and let the water collect. And here is the place where I put a couple of banana leaves that are like little bowls with water now. So I will just pour this water into my cup. Damn, look. Here one pineapple bush fell down. Just fell down. I do not know why probably also from the humidity like banana bushes. But the problem is that if it will lie here like that, it will just go bad and rot. And if I do not eat it, no one else will eat it. So this little one I probably will take. It would be such a pity if such good fruit goes bad. Look, I need to pick it up. It gets pretty cold when it rains, so I'd rather sit in the warm ocean and wait out this rain and then return to land. The most important thing, friends, when it rains, do not forget to take this chance to get fresh water. Now I made a drainage thing with a banana leaf, put a bowl close to it, and I, while it rains, I will manage to collect some water. Because fresh water is crucial when you are surrounded by salty ocean.
Cha 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 cha. <laughs> so friends, look, the rain stopped a little. I do not know if for a long time. I hope so. I hope I have a chance to make a fire. But the problem is that now everything is damp, so it is a challenge to find a tinder in order to get fire. There is a tree in the jungle, and it is all over the place. You can see over there. It's a fruit tree. Over there, and it looks like this. Here's some kind of closed bean. What's the plus side? Even in the damp jungle, you can always find this kind of fruit. Let's say it fell into the water or got caught in the rain. So imagine you kindling was covered in water. But cool thing that it's no big deal because this type of tinder is not afraid of water. As we already know, and this fruit here is very useful. Because look, I'm going to wipe off the water just a little bit. Just cut it. And you have natural fluff inside. Pretty much like poplar fluff or fluff from the reeds. And now, look. Even though it was in water, I can take some of this fluff out and put it in my fire and some small branches and they're kindling and there we go. That's why I got five of these seeds. Put them also in the cave and using this seed now I will try to make a fire. The most important thing of course friends, think ahead and make sure your cave or whenever you hide is stocked with dry firewood in case it rains. That is, the wood is dry and it is always possible to get the fluff out of this kind of fruit. Fuck. So, I have big branches, I also have coconut shells like this, only dry. They light up very quickly and give a good heat. So, but take this kind of wood, which is dry because it dried up quickly on the wind after the rain stopped. So, I'll just use it to start a fire. A good one. Very dry. Perfect. There's a big crab in the burrow, but it's deep. I can't reach it with my hand. My coals are ready now. I'm going to find a banana leaf. Wrap the snails in it and put them on the coals. It's time to cook. Friends, before you cook snails, they need to soak for a couple of hours. Just catch them in some container. Put without fruits or without anything they can eat. Within three to four hours, all the crap that they ate before will leave their bodies. It basically looks like the pieces of soil with slime, but still, I do not want to eat it. So, a little I need to keep snails like that for a bit to kind of clean them. And when they already have empty stomachs, I can start cooking them. I will cook using the same method that I used to cook crayfish on a desert island in Ukraine. So first, I put the leaves on the coals so that the snails don't burn. Then I put the snails on top of the leaves and then I cover them again with banana leaves. I have good charcoal so I will cook them this way for 5 minutes. So I am arranging the soil here in this way. I don't want to show you how I'm putting snails on hot stones. It doesn't really look good, so I'll just show you the result.
I cover everything with leaves and in this dome of steam, they will cook for five, seven minutes. I think it will be enough. I'll tell you friends honestly that I do not get any pleasure from it. I don't like I had to fry these snails because I used to have a couple of big Akatina snails as my pets so of course I feel sorry for them all but here it is a matter of survival so I need something to eat and I had to sacrifice them. I took 10 of the biggest ones and I'm frying them now so you have to understand that if you do these things it's not just for fun but only when you really had to do it. Let my snails stew for a bit. Oh, it is hot. Already quite well fried. These need a little longer and I can get them out to eat. So let's try the first snail. This is the thing I made. The snail gets stuck here and I get it out of the fire. Hot. Honestly, even tastier than I imagined. Not too dry, but well fried. There is a little bit of a bitterness, but maybe it was either the leaves or the coals gave that flavor. Actually, in some ways, it even tastes a bit like crayfish, but crayfish is still much tastier. Now, I have tasted the grape snail. Just the fleshy part fell out and the rest is in the shell. Already a couple more snails are fried, but it is all a little too sad. But let's remember how we fry mussels or the same oysters we eat all alive. And in Asia, in Cambodia, for example, it is a snack. On every corner they sell snails. Grape snail for them are like sunflower seeds. You go down the street and you can buy a glass of boiled snails. We just do not usually eat this and it looks wild and unpleasant because we do not cook these snails. For us, they are exotic pets, but nevertheless, in my case, it is food. It is a source of protein and a source of carbohydrates and a chance to survive on this island another day. How tasty it looks. Well, it looks like this. There is the top part of the meat, and then the stomach. I cut it off. And the fleshy leg is like this. You can eat it. Ate, well in general, what it tastes like sea snail, type of mollusk officially called Rapana venosa. I do not know why it is bitter, perhaps it depends on what kind of fruit they were eating or maybe it is just the taste of coal I was using or these leaves. But as far as I know, banana leaves do not give bitterness, for sure. So I do not know. I'll try Ahotina. Ugh, oh, it is very hot. Just like that. Right away, I cut off the leg and throw away the insides. Let's think it's some kind of mushroom and not a snail. Well, the Akatina is delicious. Not like that at all. For real, Akatina is tasty. Akatina is very different in taste. I did not even think that it is going to be like that. Akatina is very similar to crab. There's no bitterness and almost sweetness. It is juicier and more meaty. So noted, because in the jungle saw some very large Akatina snails. I will probably take them and cook them, and I don't want grape snails. They are bitter and not good at all. I eat one more Atina and leave these on the coals for now. I am gonna go dive, because in an hour and a half, maybe two sun will go down. And I want something else underwater to catch something to eat tomorrow morning. Also, I see that the sky is overcast and most likely it will rain again in the evening. 
So no time to lose. This is what they look like. Like a little ship. Honestly, very tasty. A katina is very tasty. Grape snails are bitter. Not good at all. But these ones I can eat and survive on them. I ate enough nutritious food. Well, not a delicacy straight from the restaurant, but at least some portion of protein, so it is better than nothing. In the evening, the sky is covered with thunderclouds. I'm sure it will rain, and, and looks like it is going to be heavy, so I will have to hide in my cave. And I have so much free time to think about everything. I don't have enough batteries to shoot non-stop, so I don't shoot anything for 60% of the time. Walking, studying the location, I think what to do next, how to get water, where to get food. I think about home a lot. I miss my folks. I just realized that I'm going to be here for a very long time and of course I start to get bored. The main thing is to take care of my health because it can be problematic to hospital or medical supplies. So I need be realistic and analyze my state, now my strengths and what I am capable of. I need not to do stupid things, which I generally do quite often. Being alone with my thoughts feels very good. I can think about work, about new projects, about succeeding in the projects I am currently involved in. I have a lot of time to think, and because there is no internet, I can't distract myself from my thoughts by scrolling through Instagram or surfing the internet. And also I thought I was shooting wide angle, but sorry, now you have to get to know my knees a little bit more. And re-recording is not the same, I can't play the emotions. So, sorry.